I want my kids to grow up like healthy and happy and independent. And we just feel like it's our responsibility to take care of them and to make the right choices until they're old enough and then they'll make their own choices. I have a child who's a year and nine months. His name is Riley and we're currently raising him vegan. You would be really surprised how many parents come in here that are raising their child either just veg or vegan. I'm doing this seitan marinade and uh, I've got some collard greens. Some garlic here. And we got some roasted Brussels sprouts here. Hello, my name is Michael. I've been vegan for 10 years. My partner and I, Heather, I raised four vegan children. People think sometimes that, oh, you're vegan. You know, you're not making the smart choice for your children. But really, a lot of our choices are smarter than the kids that are going to get the half meals every day. When I myself um, became vegan and I felt so good during my pregnancy and then afterwards I was like, automatically I'm going to raise my children vegan. There's no other way, you know. Gail made your favorite cake. The vanilla cake with the vanilla buttercream like mommy makes, you know, the vegan buttercream. We have a vegan child who's turning three today and we're celebrating her birthday. Vegan, vegan, vegan. Um, I just know that animals are friends and they're not, you know, we don't eat our friends. And tell her, do you want to eat a cow? And she says, no. <laughs> just by making it clear that the connection between food and animals. My name's Jeff Levine and my wife is Melissa. We've been together 16 years now and had our first child, Eliana, two and a half years ago. And we've been raising her vegan. We opened up this restaurant. One to get this type of food out to the public. Opportunity came up and we were just like, let's do it. Being a vegan mom is easy. It gets a lot harder when the kids get in school and they're in a regular school and almost all the kids are eating the American diet. Most kids today eat 90% of the caloric intake from cheese and butter, dairy products, oil, sugar, and flat white flour. That's 90% of the caloric intake. So the average American is feeding their child a diet style that has to result in them getting cancer when they're adults. I feel that by raising my children vegan, I'm giving them they're, they're eating much more vegetables and fruits than their meat-eating counterparts. It, it's good for their body. It's going to help them more in the long run. Your diet has to be predominantly healthy food if you expect to be healthy. And both processed foods and animal products do not contain the antioxidant nutrients. In other words, the four classifications of foods that are rich in antioxidants and phytochemicals are fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, and beans. I do recommend my patients with heart disease become vegans. Not because I'm promoting a vegan lifestyle, it's because I'm promoting they eat a diet to reverse their heart disease. My definition of being vegan would be absolutely no animal products. She doesn't drink, you know, the milk with a cow on it. She understands that, like, even with milk, that the you know, cow's milk is for baby cows. We think that, you know, milk to get calcium and milk is so healthy for us. But it's, when we look at the data and we look at the science behind it, mm -hmm. we see it's not quite that way. We also see the idea that it builds bones and it is really not true either, that people on high dairy diets don't have stronger bones. People on high vegetable diets have high stronger bones. We're the only mammals that drink other mammals' milk. Like, it doesn't seem natural, you know? You would never see a cow, like, you know, drinking milk from a dog. The milk designed by humans for humans, called mother's milk, is perfectly designed, and we see that that decreases the rate of breast cancer in the women doing the breastfeeding and it decreases the rate of breast cancer and prostate cancer and the baby being breastfed. What, what should you eat instead of cow's milk? Soy milk. Cow's milk and cow's milk products have a heightened degree of respect in the society, which is largely due to a very successful advertising campaign. When I've been pregnant, I've had people come up to me and say, oh, you're vegan, like, are you eating enough? Are you eating the right food? The way parents eat when they're pregnant and even two years prior to conception, your diet and what you ate affects the health of your child. We went to interview different physicians. One thing they all had in common is when we said, oh, well, we want to raise a vegan, they go, oh, well, that's no problem. And we've now linked the fact that low vegetable intake and low fruit and vegetable intake in general to higher risk of birth defects, not only birth defects, but higher risk of brain tumors and other cancers in childhood. I see that my kids are very, very healthy. They never have runny noses, maybe sick once in their life, nine years old, 18 months old, never sick. Um, always happy, you know, lots of energy. Our kids are so healthy, and their blood workup is always perfect. They're healthy, happy children, like no problems. 
you know, you just look at her and she's had never had an ear infection since birth. He's already healthier than three quarters of the kids I know. He's only been sick once in his entire life. So some people believe that meat is the only source of protein and if you're excluding meat from your diet then you're not getting the protein anymore. Protein's easy to find, calcium is easy to find. Well, how did the cow get the calcium? Or the, how did the animals that get this big, the gorilla, the potamus, rhinoceros, giraffe, elephant, how did they get so big? There's plenty of protein, plenty of calcium in natural plant foods. In orange, there's plenty of calcium. Green vegetables are rich in calcium. Beans and nuts and seeds are all rich in calcium. The main misconception is that vegetarian or vegan children are somehow missing out on, on fun or coolness. Yeah, there's just a misconception in general that vegans don't have fun. And vegans don't enjoy their food. They just eat because they have to eat and it's not pleasurable in any way. My son eats anything. Mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, any kind of potatoes. My favorite food is mango. Mango. Collard greens, Brussels sprouts, artichokes. Veggie burgers. Vegetarian shrimp and chicken. Vegan grilled cheese sandwiches. Vegan pancakes. French toes. I mean, it's the same thing that other kids eat, just veganized. I go to animals and animals are my friends. <laughs> we ordered the pizza without cheese and bought our own cake, and you know, we want her to live a normal life but be vegan, so she doesn't feel like she's being excluded from anything. When my son finally starts going to school, that's something I fear. I fear him being ostracized. I fear the whole cupcake for the birthday scenario. When they start school, we always write a letter to the teacher, and then we schedule a meeting with the teacher, and we explain that, you know, this is this is their diet. I'm really trying to be vegan, but it's really hard. <laughs> Why is it hard? Because. Every time I have a party at me, boy, want it, but not me. You want the things they have, like the pretty cookies and the cupcakes. Yeah. Because I want her to know that it's natural to want to try things or to be curious. And then I tell her, was there something that you really wanted to eat? And then she'll say, oh, they had a donut. So I'll try to hunt down a vegan donut. If they do have like a party or celebrate some kind of um, holiday, we find out what they have in the menu. And Michael's a really, really good cook, so usually like the stuff that he brings in is usually pretty much more popular than the other stuff. Veganism is not just about what you eat. No, we don't wear wool, leather, fur, nothing, no animal products. Whatsoever. And she doesn't. She knows. She knows what all those products are from too. So. We actually don't bring our children to the zoo. People are like, oh, you can't bring your child to the zoo? What what do they get out of that? They see these animals that aren't in the natural habitats that we've we've taken in, that we've, we've stuck in these little cages, and then we say, oh, that's that's normal, that's okay. And instead of um, instead of a zoo, we bring them to like a farm sanctuary. We don't bring them to uh, circuses with animals. We bring them to Circus Oz. We brought them to Circus Soleil. They've actually probably seen more shows than most children. Being a vegan mom is great. I think ethically it's, it's the best choice you can make. It's, it's better for the environment. It's, it's better for the animals. It's, it's, it's more conducive to a healthier lifestyle. I think even if she doesn't stay vegan later in her life, if she chooses not to be, she'll still be a compassionate person because of her you know, experience as a vegan. At the end of the day, I know I can I can sleep peacefully knowing that I'm doing my best and putting as much energy and and time and thought into raising them. I hope kids who are being raised vegan are proud. And once my son realizes that he's vegan, because he's not old enough yet, I hope he realizes, wow, that's so cool that my mom raised me with intention and love and compassion. And I want him to be proud. And I hope all vegan kids are proud of themselves, because they're doing something really awesome.